Aha! It's out! Hello, people of the internet. Today, I'm going to be working on that ranger over there. And no, I'm not going to be ripping the truck off its frame just yet. If you're new and you're wondering what I'm talking about, up above my head is a link to the video where I hauled that thing out of New Hampshire and drove it cross country 2,700 miles. Before I separate the cab in the bed from the frame so I can do the frame and drivetrain restoration, I want to see just how nice I can get this factory paint looking because it's in great shape. I'm sure a few of you are wondering why I'm doing this ass backwards right now by doing the interior and the paint first instead of the important stuff first. And that's because I need to get the MR2 100% drivable before I down this truck. There's like 20 to 30 mile per hour gusts right now. So I'm probably gonna end up washing like every vehicle within a 30 foot radius of this truck right now. Everything I spray out here ends up all over my face and my clothes and luckily enough that foam cannon sprays white creamy substance out of the tip. So that was delightful. I should probably fix that leaking hose attachment before it ruptures and shoots me in the back of the head because that definitely sounds like it's about to rupture. Before I continue any further I'm going to answer your question that I know at least two of you had. No, I'm not using the two bucket method because I don't think there's ever been a two bucket method done on this truck in its life. It needs to be paint corrected still. And also I'm not gonna do underneath the hood because I gotta pull the cab. And likely when I pull the cab, I'm gonna end up repainting the radiator core support because there's some crusty stuff on it. I can actually hear the roar of all the bees outside on all the flowers right now. First time I've ever had to remove a bird before flight. Drive, whatever, same thing. Before I can commit pulling the cab and the bed off of this Ranger and doing the full restoration on it, I want to get this thing sorted because I have sponsored parts for it and I would like that car to be drivable where I could just hop in it and do a short road trip if I want to, which I don't feel confident in it right now because of the wiring. I need to redo the engine harness on this thing because this thing has a JDM engine and JDM engine harness in it, which means it came from a salty Pacific environment. That's why it has creepy green death on just the engine harness and none of the other harnesses. And go, whoa, <laughs> these right here are cut towards somebody else. Ooh, pink bubble wrap, I already like Link. Check this out. I don't always organize parts on the top of my toolbox like I'm Chris Fix's sister, but when I do, it's for a good reason. So here is the Link ECU and the G4 Can Lambada. That's fun to say. All the wiring, map sensor, and then over here, I got my coil packs and a fresh game of musical cars. Now complete as well. The battery in the Audi is dead because the car has been sitting since January. It's a brand new battery, but it's dead now. And it's heavy as hell to push. So I had to push it all the way out and then rotate potato these things into place. So let's get to work. Okay, plan of attack. I'm going to start in the trunk and reverse engineer which Toyota has here. So back beyond here is where the factory ECU is. And there's a clipper doodle holding that in place. Okay. 
I want to try to keep this as clean and factory looking as possible. So, this is going to be the new home for the new ECU. Number one dumb kill I see people do when working on cars, especially electrical stuff, not disconnecting the battery before you start doing it. So this right here should be the new ECU cut away from you. Fancy. This is pretty. It's so nice compared to the factory one. Little mounting bracket. I'm gonna see if I can try to do this without drilling any holes. Power wires. Out. Ouch. I'm labeling all of the factory Toyota plugs under here. Even though I can look in the Toyota service manual, it'll say what plug is for what. That way when the harness is laying on the floor, it'll be a lot easier for me for visual reference to know what plug goes to what when I'm building the new harness. I would like to try to keep a factory fuse box back here instead of having to do like a different one. I don't see why I would have to. Look at that rat's nest of shit old wiring. Bundling my taillight harness with the engine harness in the same thing was kind of a dumb idea now that I think about it. Had I not done that, I wouldn't have to cut this loom apart right now because they'd be separate. Hello. <laughs> that was so lame. That was like the worst roll into shot ever. Anyway, this right here, holding this in my hand and knowing that I'm tearing apart the harness on this thing that took me over a year to get this thing to run right, is super stressful. So if you look down here, this cluster of blue wires, there's a bunch of these blue wires. These were all corroded with green, creepy, green death when I first redid the harness. Problem is, I may have replaced wires that had bad enough corrosion to cause this thing to not operate correctly before, but that was a year and a half ago, and corrosion continued to spread in there, so now there's a couple more of those same exact wires, because it's a bundle that run the entire circuit for the fuel system. I believe they're all powers and not grounds. I think I had that backwards last time. Goodbye, EA1. The real question is, can I get off my injector harness without taking any of this piping out or the throttle body? One harness. Ah, ah, ah. Oh, is it ground down here too? Not about that. Looks like I need a new CV axle boot. This one's leaking right above the downpipe. I'm guessing it got dried out from the heat. Welcome to tomorrow. The next day. I came here yesterday, I had a hair appointment and I did a little bit of work on the car but I didn't want to film it because it'd be too many days in this video and you guys would be like, why do you change outfits so much? So I pulled this yesterday, here's a little snippet. Aha! There you go, there's proof I was here yesterday. Anyway, it's out! So come, 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 come. This I'm pretty sure is a USDM harness, not a JDM harness because there's plugs for stuff that a Japanese spec engine does not have on it. So. Uh, yeah, I don't need this anymore, but that was just a little discovery. And also, if you're wondering why this video started out with me saying I was going to do detailing on the exterior of the Ranger, that's because common sense kicked in and I realized if I have to pull the bed and the cab off of the frame and I put all this work into polishing the paint, it's probably going to get little scuffs here and there taking that apart. That's stupid. I just really want to see it clean. So we're doing this. This is more important. All right, now, see all these blue wires? Yeah, these are the blue wires I had to replace a bunch of them because they had creepy green death. This is a body harness, not an engine harness. I forgot about that. It was just because this goes inside the engine fuse box and I was thinking that was the engine harness. So, I'm going to replace the body harness from left kick panel to back here. I want fresh new wires back there as well, which means I need a 91 to 92 NA or turbo, doesn't matter body harness that is in mint shape and that's gonna be hard to find. If any of you know the whereabouts of a clean, in perfect condition, 91 or 92, cannot be newer, 
NA or turbo body harness from left kick panel by the pedals to here with the fuse box complete. Let me know, I need one. I have never done this in my life on a car before. However, I've built more harnesses than I can count for pieces of aviation equipment. It's gotta be the same thing, right? So I got two bags right here. I feel like this part's gonna be triggering for some people because wires. Harness number two. I am the instructions for this. So my step one is going to be placing the ECU where its home is going to be, here-ish. Step W, put the other harness in the engine bay. It is recommended that your Link G4X Storm ECU is installed by a trained professional. Define trained. I got this. Okay, so what I'm gonna start doing is taking my Dymo and going through shield slash ground. Uh, don't see anything about O2 on here. Now I'm no longer doing this in the dark. I got some tech data for this car. Okay, this is a game changer. Now I can figure this out. Now that I can see how everything works on this car. This is what I'm gonna have the biggest problem with is pins, because I gotta reuse a lot of these connectors off the stock engine harness and I don't have new pins for them. I'm gonna need the help of you internets to help me track down some OEM Toyota pins for this harness so I can reuse these plugs. Aha, here is my missing link, uh, pun intended. <laughs> this was, this is what I needed right here so I can start doing the circuit for though too. Okay, cool. This will be the one up by the turbo. And then I have a secondary O2 a little bit further downstream that's hooked up to the SCG1, which is the electronic boost controller and wideband. I'm going to keep that in the car to act as a visual boost reference that's on my steering column and also has a wideband gauge on that as well. So even if that's not controlling boost anymore, because the ECU is doing it, I can still have it as a functioning boost and wideband gauge right there on the steering column already. My O2 sensor, CAN L and CAN H are my two signals. Here they are right here. O2 sensor, CAN H, CAN L. So I know they're on loom B connector. And these two wires, gray, purple, gray, and white are to go to the signals for the O2. O2, print. I'm not gonna make a label for every wire right now. That's just ridiculous. I'll group them. I don't know how I'm gonna do all these wires and make videos out of it and get all this work done and then still do car reviews and sleep. This is gonna be a lot of work to do completely by myself. I figured I'd spare you guys 45 minutes of this. I sat here and I categorized and grouped all the wires together. So I have my zero to five volt analog sources. I have some grounds, I have some ignition wires. I have some channels for injectors. It made more sense just to do this on the floor instead of in the back of the car. Now that I have all these wires laid out though, I can start looking at the Toyota wiring schematic and looking at what is required for each one. So say the uh, idle air control valve, I know off of memory that uses a 12 volt in the center and then it has two uh, five volts. Here, I'll just show you the plug right there. There is a 12 volt source in the center and then two five volts on the side. And I believe there's also a ground that goes into that right there for the idle air control valve. Stuff like that, now that I have those right there, I can fulfill the requirements for each one of those circuits by sending a wire corresponding to each different one and where they're located in the engine bay and then build my own little wiring diagram before I do more stuff. This is stressful. <laughs> I'm gonna end the video here because I don't, I don't, how do I film this from here forward? Please give me input in the comment section below. Below? I'm hungry. I want baloney. I'm going to be doing this for the next probably week or two. So I need your guys' love and support on this one because I'm doing it alone and this is mildly stressful. Because I want to be able to drive this car again someday. Oh, geez. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this. 
and I will see you soon. Bye.